Intel have gone a little bit insane with the 6950X. This is a 10 core Broadwell E CPU. It is pretty ridiculous in its both performance and its price, and we're going to take a look at it in this video. So feel free to stick around. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting. Check out techteamgb.co.uk for more awesome news, reviews and other stuff, including more information on this product and many more. Stick around for this awesome video. Now with this being a Socket 2011-3 and an Extreme Edition, you'd expect this to retail for quite a lot. And you'd be right, because this is an enthusiast platform and you're looking to spend uh, well over a thousand UK pounds or possibly even two thousand US dollars, so yeah, pretty, pretty pricey. Get ready for your wallets to be assaulted. Now, this is obviously a rather beastly chip for your money. You do get 10 cores and 20 threads, 3 gigahertz base clock with 3.5 gigahertz boost clock with uh, Intel's Turbo Boost uh, 3.0, um, which uh, actually is quite cool. Obviously, 25 megs of cache and uh, 40 PCI aliens and 140 watt TDP. But uh, yeah, this is uh, very much enthusiast. Obviously, it does support the uh, standard, or at least standard for the enthusiast platform, quad channel DDR4. These support up to DDR4 2400 megahertz, which is quite nice. Now, having a look at CPU-Z, obviously, you can see that this does turbo boost fairly regularly, which is quite nice. Uh, although, in terms of benchmarks, this is actually a little bit strange because single core performance is almost as usual, down considerably compared to the 5960X, and is even down compared to the 6900K, the 8-core version that I took a look at uh, a couple weeks ago. Now, in terms of multi-threaded performance, because this is an unlocked processor, you have a lot of headroom for overclocking, and while I'm not personally all that great at it, it still does leave nice headroom, so that's quite cool. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, though, is that in terms of actual benchmarks, the numbers that I was getting from the 6900K versus the 6950X were actually pretty close. Obviously, as you can see in stuff like uh, Asus Realbench, the 6900K actually came out on top, not by too much, but still uh, a, a kind of notable difference. And for me, that kind of says that uh, a lot of the applications that we have right now really aren't built for uh, many, many cores. Obviously, 8 cores has technically been around with the FX series, so it's not been too kind of uh, bad in sort of multitasking like that. But 10 cores on the kind of more mainstream stuff, like actual games, even synthetic benchmarks it does seem to show that you don't really get that much of a, a performance increase uh, once you hit more than sort of maybe four six or eight cores uh, so that is something to take into account especially if you're running uh, sort of or plan to pick this up for a gaming system now obviously this is a very beastly chip uh, and if you were uh, you know trying to get the best of the best this certainly is it uh, and there's no kind of doubting that although do bear in mind that Xeons at a similar price point do provide provide up to 14 cores, so that's kind of food for thought. So I have a kind of interesting and possibly unpopular opinion of this chip, and that's that it's a really awesome chip. It's fantastic, and I love to see 10 cores on the uh, sort of mainstream enthusiast platform. But at the same time, I don't really understand who it's for. At this price point, you can pick up a 14 core or a 24 thread Xeon, which has dual socket support, or multiple socket support, it has ECT memory support, and a few other server grade features that if you're looking for this much processing power on a single chip, you're probably gonna want. Now at this price point, as I said, it just doesn't make too much sense. If it was a thousand dollars or something, uh, you know, to replace the 5960X, the last Extreme Edition, that would make a lot of sense and that would be absolutely awesome. But considering that, you know, mainstream kind of processors, quad cores aren't really being uh, fully maximized in games, you won't really see much of a performance difference in gaming with this chip, especially compared to the 6900K as you saw in the uh, benchmark results. Uh, and also in terms of the synthetic benchmark, you didn't even see much of a difference there either. So that was really kind of surprising to me. And while it's awesome to have 10 cores, you know, 20, uh, 20 threads, um, you're able to pick up a 24 thread for the same price um, uh, you know, obviously Xeon, but means you can have multiple sockets, you can have ECC memory support. Um, so yeah, it's just confusing for me. Feel free to let me know what you think in the comments down below, as I'm really interested to hear your opinion on this. Obviously, this isn't something that I'll be personally picking up, but it's awesome just to kind of know it exists and we're pushing the platform a bit further. 
Um, other than that, uh, yeah, in terms of scoring, we're going to go for a 3 for 5 money. It really isn't that fantastic right now, uh, and considering that, uh, as I said, applications don't really use more than 4, possibly 8, uh, 10 is just a little bit extreme on the sort of enthusiast mainstream side. Um, in terms of performance, it has to be a 5 though. It, in terms of functionality, it's actually going to be a 4 because at this price point, it doesn't really make sense to not have uh, multiple socket support, ECC memory support, and that sort of stuff. File, I have Style is going to get a 5 because it's a chip, and Titan Ruby score is going to be a 4. So I guess that's kind of it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and feel free to let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below. Feel free to subscribe if you did, and feel free to dislike, but as I said, let me know what you thought in the comments down below so I can improve for next time. If you're buying anything on Amazon, it would really be awesome if you could use my affiliate links. Even if it's, you know, your garden shed, it would be awesome if you could use the link as it genuinely is helping me make these videos on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for uh, watching, and we'll see you on the next video.